So folks, this video that I'm about to do requires you to have gotten a pretty good grasp of what we were doing with these expressions here. So remember, we represent the left Riemann sum when, by using this abstract expression here. And what this was was a way of systematically jumping between the intervals. We represented the right Riemann sum this way and the midpoint Riemann sum this way. So um, please, folks, if you're struggling with this, go back and watch the first video uh, where I introduce that notation. So now what we'd like to do is uh, let's just say we have some positive function f. And I'm going to practice writing out the Riemann sums a few different ways. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the area between the curve and the x-axis, and in this case we're doing, we've got various intervals here, but the area between the curve f and the x-axis uh, can be approximated, we're told, to use four rectangles with the left endpoint method. So I'm going to say that it's L sub uh, 4, and here I'm going to set this up abstractly. I'm going to go ahead and say, um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and put this as an n here, folks, I'm sorry, L sub n, and I'll set up the left Riemann sum abstractly. So all I'm, gonna, all I'm going to end up doing is copying the expression that I had up above there in question number four. This is going to be my f of Remember we said this was a plus k minus 1 delta x all inside the function then times delta x on the end. And this is always hard to see here, folks. This, is, this expression right here is the height of the rectangle and this is the width. And all this piece is is a systematic way of ensuring that I'm always selecting the left endpoints of my subintervals when I go to evaluate that, forcing me to, to compute the left endpoint method. Okay, so this is what I'm asking you to do when I say to write it out generally. I'll go ahead and clean up these two lines here so it doesn't confuse you. So this is what I'm asking you to do when I say to compute the Riemann sum generally. So then let's go ahead and tailor this Riemann sum specifically for our problem here. So this is going to be the sum from k equals 1, and we were told that n in this case is 4, because we want 4 rectangles, so that's going to be 4. And we're going to have f of, now what's our, what's a stand for? a stands for the left endpoint of our interval, so 2, plus, this part's always going to be the same for any left endpoint method problem, it's always going to be k minus 1, and then I need to multiply this by delta x. Well here, delta x is equal to 22 minus 2 uh, divided by 4, so my delta x in this case uh, would be 5. All of that's going inside the argument of the function, folks, and then we're multiplying this by another number 5 because that's that delta x on the outside there. Okay? So this is what I'm saying when I say to give a specific Riemann sum tailored to our question. And then we can go ahead and write these intervals out in expanded form. So if you, I let my counter be 1, then I'm going to have 2 plus 0 times 5. So what's going inside the function when my counter is 1? If I let k be 1 here, this whole expression, which I'm underlining in green here, when k is 1, this would evaluate to be 0. And so what I'd be left with computing is just f of, so this is 0, so 2 plus 0, which is f of 2 times 5. That was when k was 1. Now if I let my counter step up to 2, I'm going to plug a 2 in for this k right here, so we'd have 2 minus 1, which is 1, times 5, uh, which would give me one copy of 5 added to 2. And so what would that be? Clean that up. What would that be? That would be f of 7. I think I've got a little scoot over. Yeah. So plus, then when I let k be 3, I'll have 2 plus 3 minus 1, which is 2, so 2 plus 2 times 5, which is 12. So I have f of 12 times 5. And then lastly, I'll have, when I let k be 4, which is my stop value, I'll have 2 plus 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15. So I'll have 2 plus 15, which is 17 times 5. And so what you'll what you I want you to notice here folks is unlike the earlier examples that we did with these Riemann sums, this one compact expression does everything I need it to do with regards to both the left endpoint method certainly, but also in terms of 
correctly choosing the values in the subintervals. And that's the beauty of using this uh, particular notation. Then, if I happen to know what f was, I could continue doing these computations, um, but uh, we'll skip that for now. Let me just underline that three times. That's what I'm calling the expanded form of this. So let's do that again now, folks. Let's do another one of these problems. We're going to have uh, f, and it's going to be, we're going to be computing the area between f and the x-axis on the interval from 0 to 6 with three rectangles, and we're going to use the right endpoint method. So here we go. A is approximately R sub N, and that's going to be the sum of, from K equals 1 to N, of F of some expression delta X. That's what all of these look like. What's different between each one is what do I plug in here? And we said that when we're using an abstract way of representing the right endpoint method, we'll do A plus K delta X sitting inside there. Well, now let's go ahead and tailor this for our specific function. So we'll have the sum from k equals 1 to how many total rectangles do we want? We want three rectangles, so k equals 1 to 3, of f of what's our leftmost endpoint? It's 0, plus k copies of our delta x. Delta x in this case is going to be what? Well, we need to compute that. Let's go over and compute that. Our delta x in this case is going to be 6 minus 0 divided by 3, so our delta x is 2. Notice that this enables me to systematically move to the right endpoints of my subintervals. Then we do times the width, which is 2. So this is what I'm calling the general way. Oops. So this is what I'm calling the general way of giving this expression. This is what I'm calling tailored to our specific function in our specific set of circumstances with n uh, being 3 and the uh, number of rectangles we want, etc., the widths. And then we can go ahead and actually expand this out. So when my counter is 1, we're going to have f of 0 plus 1 times 2, which is f of 2 times 2, plus, then I'm going to bump my counter up to 2, so I'll have 0 plus 2 times 2, so that's f of 4 times 2, plus, and then last, we will let my counter be 3, so I'll have 0 plus 3 times 2, so that's f of 6 times 2. Folks, just to convince you, let me go ahead and underline that three times, just to convince you that this works, if you were to actually look at what my intervals would be for one of these problems, my intervals would be uh, 0 to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to 6. And notice that this pro procedure of representing this as a plus k delta x ensured that I did get the right endpoints of each of these intervals. So last, the last I'm asking you to do here is to do the midpoint method for one of these. So in this case, let's go ahead and since we keep forgetting to do it before, um, we're going to do four rectangles on the interval from 2 to 6. So what's our delta x going to be? Delta x will be 6 minus 2 divided by 4, which in this case would be 1. Folks, I do ask is if your delta x is 1, I still want you to write it out, because that shows to me that you haven't forgotten that term. I know 1 times any number uh, returns that original number, but I want to see those delta x's showing up. So we're going to say that the area can be approximated by the midpoint method with n rectangles. And again, everything looks the same up to a point. The sum from k equals 1 to n of f of some expression delta x. The question is, is what goes inside there? And in this case, it's a plus 2k minus 1 over 2 delta x. That one is hard for me to remember, but you'll see that that's precisely what I gave you uh, earlier when we gave the abstract way of representing the midpoint method as a Riemann sum. There's that 2k minus 1 over 2 delta x. Okay, so this is what I'm calling the, you know, the formula for the midpoint method. Now let's tailor that formula as a Riemann sum for our specific n value and uh, number uh, uh, and, and, and intervals. So we're going to do this from k equals 1 to, we want a total of four rectangles, k equals 1 to 4, of f of 2 plus, this part's the same for every midpoint problem, 2k minus 1 over 2. That just ensures we correctly select the right midpoint times our delta x in this case, which we've said is 1. 
And all of that is just this expression that sits inside the function times our width. Okay. So that's what I'm calling the uh, specific Riemann sum for this specific problem. Now let's go ahead and figure this out. Now this is actually kind of fun to see how well this works, I think, folks. When k is 1, sitting inside this first function here, I'm going to have the, I'm going to go ahead and write this one out. I'll have 1 plus 2 times 1 minus 1 over 2 times my delta x. That's what's going to go inside the function. Oops, I'm sorry, folks. That should be, when k is 1, this is going to be 2 plus 2 times 1 minus 1 over 2. So I just replaced that k with a 1 there. And notice that that is 2 minus 1, which is 1, which is uh, 1 half times 1, or 1 half. So I get 2 and a half. So that's going to be my 2.5, which we all know that if we go, if we write out these intervals, we're going from 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6. We can see, yeah, what's the midpoint of the interval from 2 to 3? It's 2.5. That's precisely what we wanted here. And then we're going to multiply it by our base 1. So again, you can check. If I let my k value be 2 here, I'd have 2 plus 2 times 2 minus 1 divided by 2 times 1. So I've got 2 plus, let's see there, that's going to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. So 3 halves times 1. So I'm going to get 2 plus 3 halves, and that is... 3.5, which you can see is precisely the midpoint of that second interval there. So I need you to realize that although this, this expression underlined in green here looks like an absolute mess, all it is is a formula that ensures we always get the midpoint for each of our intervals based on our n uh, and our uh, specific interval, in this case 2 to 6 that we started with. So I'll just finish out the last for just completion sake. This would be 4.5 uh, times 1. That's our 1, 2, 3, plus f of 5.5 times 1. And this is what I'm calling the expanded Riemann sum. Okay. Folks, I hope this helped to clarify. I'm going to leave you to try this last one on your own. It's the same problem. Oops, you can see I've already given you the answers there. I'd like you to try number 6 on your own. It's the same problem. It's your chance to try it uh, to see how well you're understanding this. Please do not look at the solutions until you've gotten a good guess at these. If you're just copying down the solutions, then this whole pre-work is just kind of a waste of time. I need you to actually try this number six on your own. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you. We'll see you next time.